We always recommend keeping your templates in an operational folder under marketing activities. Uh, and so what you would do is actually create a new folder by right clicking new campaign folder and give it a name uh, system templates. I also always recommend putting do not modify because the point of a template is to keep everything consistent and changes shouldn't be made unless the whole group agrees on it. So then what you'll want to do that now that you have your folder is create a new program. You're going to, it'll automatically default to your new program, your new program folder. And then we recommend giving it a name that's uh, relevant to your naming convention. Uh, for us in our best practice, we always recommend starting, um, you know, with a two letter um, abbreviation that, that highlights what channel it is. Since this is going to be an email, we'll say email. Um, we also recommend starting with a date. So since it's a template, we'll just say, you know, why, 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 why for year, um, month, month, and um, day. And then uh, sometimes if you have solution interests that you want to include, we, we recommend just, you know, putting solution in there and then obviously the title of your email campaign. All right, since um, we're going to do a single send email program template today, you're going to select email under program type and you'll see that when you do that, it'll default to your email channel send. Um, Optional, give it a description, I always do. Uh, so I would say, you know, single send email template for my organization. And then hit create and it will go ahead and create your template. So in this part, I always recommend starting under setup, obviously, um, tags and, and analytics behavior and all this stuff can be customized under admin. So whatever you have that's custom, for instance, a lot of uh, clients that we know use like solution interest or industry or audience uh, to further specify what this campaign is for. So you would do that here. Um, and also what, what you're not seeing is the option to uh, sync a Salesforce campaign. So you could include that as well. Once you've got that set, uh, you do have the option to create tokens that can populate any assets inside your email program template. So um, just to, to show you what that looks like here. And then smart list, if there's exclusions that you have in place, um, I would recommend putting those here. Um, ones that we like are, you know, unsubscribe, false. I mean, Marketo by default keeps this, keeps people out of this, but I always, as a backup, just keep it in here um, to make sure that you know you're not including anybody that you shouldn't be. Uh, email invalid, false is another one, uh, and then black listed and marketing suspended. And then obviously you would include any smart list or any other filters that you would use to target your audience and you keep that there and again this can all be customized once you clone it but the point of this is to create most of a program shell so that when your users clone it it makes it a lot easier to send out a campaign so next we're going to create some folders that make it a little bit easier to navigate this i always start with numbering system and name it assets this is where you're going to include um, some subfolders for your form, your email, and optional landing page. From there, you're going to create your program status campaigns. So that would be O2 program statuses. And then a third one that I like to include is reporting one to just include some generic email reports. Um, so for starters, each uh, email send will probably have its own unique uh, program statuses. So I always go to summary to make sure I see what those are. Um, for this use case, we just have member and influenced. 
So what I will do is create a generic uh, smart campaign and call this 01 influenced. And this is gonna be anybody that does the call to action in our program that's associated with success. So success can be uh, clicking a link in the email um, or filling out a form on a landing page that's linked in the email, whatever the highest action of activity for your campaign is, would be associated with this program success. Then I would start with your email after that. New local asset, email. You have a choice to pick um, some of Marketo's templates here, or if you have your own, um, you would go under my templates. Um, and just pick that one and then also give it a name. So, uh, and then you have the option to open this in an editor. We're not going to do that for this step, but, but um, if you do, that's where you would customize it. And then you would just hit create. Um, and you'll see that that's in here. And I always drag it into my folder. Let's say that we um, went through and customized the email. You would then approve it. Oops. Well, we'll show you how to customize it. You can't approve it without a subject line. That was that warning. <laughs> All right. So. And then just since we're in here, um, you could publish this to Marketo Sales Insight. That means that in, inside your uh, Salesforce or other CRM, you'd be able to see that this email was sent. Optionally, you can include this as view's web page or a preheader message. And hit save. Approve and close. Now that's in there. What that means now is that you have the ability to select this if it's approved. Uh, bonus question here, or not bonus question, but uh, if you have this selected and this is already approved, but you have to go in and make a change to this email, if you make a change and reapprove it, but don't deselect it from here, your changes will not uh, take effect. So make sure if after it's approved, you've selected it in here, deselect it, and then edit your draft, reapprove it, and add it back in. Um, so I always recommend not putting this in here or putting it in in your template because. Obviously, when it's cloned, you'll want to make changes to it. And if you clone it with the selected, your changes aren't going to take effect. So leave that empty. Uh, so if you have a form strategy where you want to keep a form with each email program, this is where you would do it. And you would just create a new, new form by selecting form under assets. I'm not going to open that one. I'm just going to create, drag it in here. You also need to approve it in order for it to show up on any landing pages. You create a new landing page. If you have a naming convention, I always recommend um, using your call to action. So temp form, reg, whatever your CTA is. And then if you have a template that you know that you're going to use, select it. Um, optional, give it a description and then hit create. That's going to open in a new window. And then you're going to want to add um, your form or whatever copy that you have. Um, 
that you want to include it on your CTA landing page. Um, so as you see, that populated my test form for the program in the previous step. And then if you had an external thank you page on your website that you wanted um, the follow-up to be after somebody fill out the form, you could put that here and then put in your URL to your website page. Or say you um, included the URL in your form when you were editing it, that's this option. Or if you're creating a separate thank you page in your program template, that would be here. Um, and then that would show up in the drop down um, here and you could select. So after you have that, um, for this one, I'm just gonna say form define and you would insert your form. You know, you put that in here, add any like copy that you want. We also recommend um, making it easier and using the tokens. So if you had in the first few steps of this, put in specialized tokens, your landing page could actually already be pre-populated with text that you put at the token level. And then once this was approved and you had copy in there, that would show up. So once that's good, hit approve and close. Move that in here. And just to show you what I meant by those tokens, come over to your rich text, add in the name of your token, and then you have the option to use a WYSIWYG and add in copy to populate your landing page. Make sure that I used. So right now I'm just previewing this, and we see that my tokens didn't show up, which probably means I didn't use the same exact one, which is why I copied it when I created the token. Right now, I'm just making sure it's the same. There we go. And then you'll see, if we look at this page, now the copy will show up. See, just as I typed it. Um, so we always recommend doing that, creating tokens to make it easier to populate your assets. You can do that in your email, you can do it in your landing pages, um, and it makes it a lot more easier for somebody to come in and edit these doing it uh, in all one location under the tokens versus having to open each single one. So after that is done, I would um, head back into your um, program status. I put that in the wrong folder. So let's go here. So my main CTA for my email um, is definitely gonna be if they filled out that form on that landing page. So what I'm gonna do is pull in a filter for fills out form. And I'm gonna look for my test form. And for this one, I'm gonna look for um, that landing page. And that's gonna be um, the name of our page. That looks good. Also here, if you don't want um, anybody to run through success and be associated with this campaign for success, if it's say um, someone from an organization doing a test or um, a competitor, you have the option to put in a filter here for either a smart list or any other um, filters that would relate to um, people that you don't want coming coming through here and being tracked. So you could just say not in um, whatever my smart list exclusion is. And then you'd go to your flow. And what we're gonna do here is change the program status to influenced. And then if you had any other information that you wanted to append to this record, if you was perhaps say, um, you know, a lead source or, um, uh, you know, alert with center, a anything that's unique to your organization. You can do that with a change data value step. Uh, you can wait, you can send a follow-up email. Um, 
you have a lot of options here. The flow is really what you want to happen after uh, someone gets that success step from this campaign. And once you have all that filled out, you're not gonna schedule it, but you're just gonna make sure that you have uh, your settings correct. So um, for, for this instance, you probably want people to run through um, every time. Uh, and so you would update that. And then once you thought that this was great, um, you would activate it only after you've cloned it for your actual use case, but you wouldn't for a template. All right, so now that you have all that set, um, I recommend adding in a regular email report. Just so that the report's already there when somebody clones it. Um, and then add in any exclusions that you might not want uh, to include in the report. For instance, some people exclude, um, you know, blacklisted, marketing suspended, or bot clickers, or, or there might be some links that you might not want to include in here. Um, so that, that's where you would do that here. And then um, under setup, I usually just keep this um, unchecked because when someone clones it, they're going to have to pick that email that they cloned. So I would just make a note on that in here. And that's it. Uh, then, obviously, send the link out to your marketing team with some instructions. Um, and then what they would do is clone it uh, for future use. They would select a campaign folder or say they wanted to add it to an existing nurture campaign. They could do that as well by selecting program, uh, give it a name, you know. select your folder and then hit create and then it is going to create a version of your template that you can now customize for a new campaign. And that is how you create an email template.